you know, <clears throat> take a, a quick uh, look at what is happening as far as uh, specific stocks are concerned. Our research team is standing by uh, with exactly that. And let's uh, kick this off with Indigo Paints first up. Lots of blocks, lots of fundraising. Nimesh is here to tell us about Indigo Paints. Nimesh, good morning. Hi, morning, Prashant. So another large block uh, this time in Indigo Paints. Uh, Peak, uh, you know, peak partners, peak investments, basically, uh, which is X A Sikova. They are looking to sell 11% stake uh, in Indigo Paints by Block Deal today. The indicative price is uh, around 4.5% discount to yesterday's closing price. Now, uh, uh, Sikova owns close to 25%, so they're selling 11.5%. And for the remaining stake, there is a 90-day lockup as well. Uh, uh, interestingly, you know, there is hardly any mutual fund holding, and I understand the demand is quite strong, so the execution could be important. If it happens in the block window, we may not see a big reaction, or else, the stock will open in the red. Okay, all right. Thanks a lot for that, uh, Nimesh. Well, let's uh, go to Abhishek. He's here to tell us about Mrs. Vector's foods. Uh, morning, Abhishek. Okay, all right. I think I, th I, I think we'll just uh, you know get to Abhishek in just a bit from now. But for the time being, I think Upasana is waiting with a list of stocks that she's tracking. Upasana, take it away. Good morning. First up, let me start with Bharat Forge. Class A truck orders remain below seasonal expectations. Net orders in August totaled 13,400 units with an uptick of 2% on a month-on-month -month basis but downtick of 16% on a YNY basis. Next up is Camlin Fine Sciences. Board will be considering fundraising via right issues on 10th of September. Hence, this stock will be in focus. And lastly, matrimony.com will also be in focus on back of its buyback as the board has approved buyback amount of 72 crores at 1025 per share which is at 27 percent premium above yesterday's closing price the buyback size is about 25 percent of the company's total paid up equity share capital hence this stock will also be in focus today okay well uh, <clears throat> let's uh, talk about uh, mrs vector's food abhishek is here with the details abhishek morning Morning, Prashant. So sources do tell us that Mrs. Vector Food has launched a QIP. Uh, the issue size is about rupees 400 crores. Uh, indicative price is about 1,550 per share, which is at a discount of just 3.9% to yesterday's closing price and about 1.8% uh, to semi floor price. So very small discount over here, unlike the other issues that we have seen with a massive discount of 5 to 10%. Uh, so in terms of uh, equity dilution, it will be about 4.4%. Use of proceeds mentioned in the uh, you know term sheet is that uh, they will repay uh, part of full of their uh, outstanding borrowings. Investment in the subsidiary that is Big Best uh, Private Limited for financing the project cost towards a uh, Kopali expansion project. Uh, so uh, financing the project uh, which is in Madhya Pradesh as well and general corporate purpose. The book running lead managers are ICICI Securities as well as others. Back to you. All right, Abhishek, thank you very much for that. So we'll watch out for uh, Mrs. Vectors. Let's uh, head across to Vamakshi now. She has a bunch of stocks on her radar as well. Vamakshi, good morning. Well, good morning. Let me first start off with NLC India and GMDC. Both of these counters are expected to open higher today and that is because the coal ministry has issued allocation orders for three commercial coal mines, which includes the Machakata coal mine to NLC India and the Kudanali Lubri coal mine to GMDC. Apart from that, watch out for Ashoka Bilcon as well and that is because its arm Viva Highways has monetized the Pune land for 453 crores. KCA has also won a couple of orders and expect the stock to open in the green and that is because the, uh, the company has received Received orders worth 1,423 crore for design, supply, and installation of transmission lines in Saudi Arabia. And lastly, let's also focus in on Angel One. Gross client addition stood at 9 lakh. This is a downtick of almost 21% coming in on a month on month basis as compared to an uptick of almost 21% on a month on month basis that we saw in the month of July. The client base also saw an uptick of 3.3%. Average daily orders, however, were down nearly 1.4%. The average daily turnover was up nearly 3.1% month on month. Uh, the market share, as far as the equity market share and FNO market share is concerned, that has remained flat month on month. And in fact, the FNO market share has remained flat month on month for the third consecutive month. Commodity market share, however, is seeing an improvement up nearly 180 basis points to 63.3%. But I'm going with the red for this counter, mainly on account of gross client addition slowing down. All right, Vamakshi, thanks a lot for that. And belated happy birthday. Hope you had a good one yesterday, part of the celebration yesterday. And I'm sure you're going to have uh, it full throttle over the weekend. But wishing you a great year ahead. Thank you so much, Nigel.
Well, on that note, let's do a quick recap of all the stocks we just covered for you. The ones with positive news flow include Vectors, you have Camblin Fine, Matrimony.com, NLC, GMDC, Ashoka Bilcon, and KEC. While stocks with negative news flow are Indigo Paints, Bharat Forge, and Angel One. That's about all the stocks that we're talking about, but let's get an insight into what's going on in the commodity markets. Manisha Gupta joins us to help us out with that. Morning, Manisha. Morning, Nigel. Thank you for that. Well, I'll start with the crude oil prices because even after the OPEC statement yesterday, we did see a knee-jerk reaction, but that hasn't held on. And we are back around to those 14-month lows when it comes to the crude oil prices. On the weekly basis, we are down by 6% for the crude oil prices. It has to do with the demand concerns coming in from U.S. and China, and that really seems to be weighing onto the markets there. The metal prices in the meanwhile are trading quite mixed. While right? you have steel and lead and zinc trading on the weaker side, copper does uh, seem to be looking at some support. And this is after China committing nearly $50 billion uh, to Africa Electric Network there. And that would mean a lot of copper requirements. And that is the sentiment support coming in from. The support really continues in case of gold and silver price. The two week highs onto this one. The markets have factored in a 25 basis point trade cut, but it really is about the global central bank buying, ETF buying in gold, even at these higher levels, that seems to be supportive. Okay, got it, Manisha. Thank you very much for a quick roundup. We'll take a break on that note. Come back on the other side, and then we will be in conversation with Siddharth Khemka, head retail research at Motilal Oswal Financial Services.